What's up you guys? It's your girl Nicole Faye and welcome back to another Juicy Fat video. As you guys can see by the title, we are discussing skin care. Today we are discussing things that I will absolutely never do to my skin. Well, I actually don't know what the title of this video is going to be. I don't know if it's things I would never do to my skin or non-negotiable things I would not do. I don't know. Anyway, we're discussing skincare, okay, today because take it from me from somebody who has had acne since I came out of my mama, cuda mama, okay? I was a pimple bumpy pizza face as soon as I came out of my mama, cuda mama, okay? So take it from somebody who has been struggling with their skin for years. I know what the I'm talking about, okay? Do not listen to them girls that have genetically clear skin because both of their mom and dads has clear skin all their lives, so they have clear skin. They don't know what they're talking about. Okay, they have no clue. Listen to me, okay? I have been working on my skin for years, okay? My skin still has a long way to go, but it's better than what it used to look. I'm not even gonna show you my high school photos, okay? Don't ask. Anyway, we're gonna be discussing 13 tips on things that I would never do to my skin. Yes, you heard me, 13. So let's go ahead and get into the video and tip number one. Okay, so tip number one is not double cleansing your skin. I literally have talked about this tip so much on my channel. If you are an active viewer on my channel, I have discussed this before and how important this is to double cleanse your skin, okay? But you know what? I need to give you guys grace because this is the purpose of this video to help you out. I mean, that's the whole purpose of my channel to help you guys out. So I'm gonna give you guys grace. I'm not gonna eat you up too bad, okay? Please double cleanse, okay? I literally found out about double cleansing from TikTok. I'm gonna just be honest, okay? So I just started double cleansing like two years ago, but ever since I have been double cleansing, my skin especially my acne prone oily skin I have really seen a difference in my skin okay I have done my makeup for years I've been doing my makeup since like I was in college so I would always just wipe off my makeup with like a makeup wipe or just wash my makeup with a bar of soap yeah somebody come shoot me in the head a bar of soap and just be like whatever I'm, I'm done not even put lotion on no serums nothing okay skin dry stripped and looking crazy but yeah that was my routine when I was younger so when I got on TikTok and I found out about double cleansing and how to properly double cleanse oh my gosh it has really changed the game for me and how much oil production I get on my face and also help clear up all that bacteria that is on my face and help me reduce less pimples like it helps reduce pimples it has really really made a difference like please start double cleansing okay I'm telling you it is going to change the game and don't just double cleanse if you have on makeup. Double cleanse every single night. Lotions, SPFs, the air pollution are also things that can really like mess up your skin and put like dirt on your skin. So don't just double cleanse if you have on makeup or have something on your face. Always double cleanse every single night and watch your skin change. Second tip is I would never use cocoa butter on my face. I know, I know, we all think that cocoa butter really does help with hyperpigmentation. Cocoa butter helps a lot with hyperpigmentation when it comes to your skin on your body, but not your face, okay? Especially if you are oily, all right? Now I know it's gonna be some people in the comments like, oh my gosh, I've used cocoa butter and it's worked for me. Good for you, you want a trophy? Anyway, if you are oily, I am talking to my oily acne prone girls, okay? Stay away from cocoa butter. Cocoa butter is going to clog your pores. And when you are an oily, acne prone, pizza face bitch, you want to stay from anything that is going to clog your pores, okay? Because that is what creates pimples, okay? Boop, 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 all over your face. So yes, yeah, stay away from cocoa butter. It works for some people. It works for those people that God took his time with, okay? And gave and blessed them with clear skin. I'm sure it works for those kind of people. But if you are a person that has issue problem prone skin, stay away from using any type of like heavy lotions, especially cocoa butter. Cocoa butter is so heavy. It's gonna clog your pores. And if you are oily, you're gonna produce more oil than you ever have before, okay? Okay, so this third tip of something I would never do to my skin is actually pretty new for me. I never knew this was a problem until it happened to me, okay? So I would never use an at-home laser device without making sure that it is dark skin friendly, all right? I was not aware of this until one time I went to go get a laser treatment done to my face that I would never go get a again because that shit hurt it so bad. But I got a Texo treatment. Basically, a Texo treatment is basically helping all of your textured skin and just smoothing out your skin. Which which is really good for people who have like acne prone skin like I do because I have like a lot of craters 
on the side of my cheekbones and things of that nature and just a lot of texture skin that has came from like having so much acne so i got that procedure done and like i said that <laughs> hurt it so bad but the lady told me that her laser treatment was good for darker skin because some laser treatments can really leave people with darker complexions like with more hyperintation and dark marks around their face because every laser treatment is not dark skin friendly and that not only goes for at home laser treatments but also laser treatments that you get from med spa so make sure if you want to get a laser treatment i'm not saying not get one because a laser treatment i got it did wonders for my skin okay but i did not go back because it hurt it so bad and i have a very low pain tolerance so absolutely not but it, it really did a good job on your skin so i'm not saying stay away from laser treatments like definitely get them but make sure you are clarifying either to the med spa or the esthetician asking them hey is this for black people or and making sure that the product that you have at home is for dark skin because you're going to create even more problems for your skin especially if you already suffer with hyperpigmentation and dark spots anyway don't add more fuel to the fire trust me okay make sure you ask Next, I would never use a strong retinol, okay? Let me say that again. Do not use a strong retinol or tretinoin, okay? You have to ease your way into that, okay? That's the big lead, okay? You have to ease your way into that. I would never forget. Like, this was like two or three years ago. I first started tretinoin. Like, I got it from my dermatologist. I didn't even know that tretinoin was like that good. So one day, I'm just putting it on my skin because I was seeing people on TikTok talk about how so great retinols and tretinoins are for your skin. So I was putting it on my skin. I wasn't putting on any serums before. Wasn't hydrating my skin before I put it on my retinol. I was literally washing my face, putting on retinol, and going to bed. Yes, I, I know. I used to be like, what? I used to be so bad, y'all. So, yeah, and I just noticed my face was peeling like crazy. My face was burning. I would never forget one time I put on tretinoin and I waxed my mustache. I literally had a chemical burn on my face. I burnt all of this off. Tretinoins are dangerous. Like, that is dangerous. You really have to ease into that. Do not go into just immediately start using really, really strong retinols and tretinoins, okay? You have to ease your way into that. And I would recommend you go ask a licensed esthetician what is the best tretinoin or retinols that I should start off with before you go into the big leads, okay? And I believe the big lead tretinoins or retinols are the ones at the dermatologist's office, okay? Because that tretinoin needs to be locked up. And also the dermatologist who recommended that to me needs to be locked up and lose their license because I ruined my skin doing that, all right? So be careful, be careful. But they are amazing for your skin, but be careful. Never introduce more than one product at a time, okay? This has definitely made a huge, huge, huge game changer for me, okay? Because I was always the kind of person that every time I got a new product, especially now with all the PR and stuff that I get, I'm always trying different things, but I notice once I start like messing up my routine and introducing too much at my skin, my skin be like, whoa, 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 girl. What is going on? I, I thought we were on this schedule. Now you're introducing this and we don't know who that is. Okay, your skin is very sensitive. Like your skin is just sensitive in general. Like I don't care what anybody says, treat your skin like a baby's bottom. Treat your skin gentle and think in your head that your skin is always sensitive because it is. If you have trouble skin, chill, chill. Okay, you don't need to be putting all of them products on your skin, chill. All right. But like I said, ever since I've been doing this, I like to keep my skin routine short and simple. Okay. I mean, no more 10, 12, 13 skincare routines for me because that's introducing and just using way too much product. Keep it simple. Okay. But if you're, no, I take that back. If you're going to do a, like a 10, 12, 30 step skincare routine, which is like absolutely crazy and you're rich as if you're doing that. Anyway, make sure you're doing that same routine every single night and you're not like using all different products while doing 10, 12 different things to your skin. You know what I'm saying? Always introducing a new product to your face every night while you're having a 12, 12 step skin routine. Can I talk? While you're having a 12 step skincare routine, like absolutely not, like don't do that. Keep it simple and keep it short and keep it cute so you can be cute. Okay, all right now. Who started that rumor or this fairy tale lie that putting toothpaste on your pimple makes your pimple go away? Who, who started that? Because I have beef with you, pull up, all right? Because I have serious beef with you, okay? The amount of toothpaste I used to have on my face, like toothpaste used to be a pimple patch back in the day. My face used to be covered with toothpaste because somebody 
told me that putting toothpaste on your pimple helps the pimple go away and hold on now it did work but it made it worse like it would come back in like a day or two after putting the toothpaste on there like I don't know anybody that still does that to this day but if you do stop stop go get you a pimple patch whoever said that literally was was trying to fail you like I hope they're not doing well in life whoever started that rumor okay I hope they're not you know what I'm saying? Because that was horrible. Why would they tell us to do that? Who told us to do that? All right, whatever. The next tip I would never do to my skin is slugging. But this one is kind of subjective. I was really on the fence about even putting this on the list because it depends on your skin type. It really does. If you have oily skin, you don't need to be slugging. But if you have normal or combination skin, you might be able to get away with it. But normal skin, some people can slug, some people can't. Oily people and acne prone people cannot slug. And what I mean, wait, you don't even know what the f slugging is. Have you ever heard on TikTok that basically people would like drench their face in like oils or Vaseline or Aquaphor to really like get that beautiful, soft, clear glass skin? They call it slugging, like that's the word for it. It's called slugging, basically just slugging your face in Aquaphor to wake up with baby smooth skin. But yeah, stay away from that if you're oily or acne prone because like I said that does not work for people like us. One time I tried slugging before I literally woke up and I couldn't breathe. Like my oily people know what I'm talking about when I say you can literally like put too much products on your face and you literally feel like you're you literally can feel your pores not breathing. That is how oily my skin is like I can literally feel when my pores cannot breathe because that's how heavy some products can feel on my face and slugging was one of them. I literally woke up the next day and immediately had to wash my face and when I washed my face oh my gosh like the relief and how refreshing I felt to wash that off my face because it's not for everybody and it's just going to increase the oil production to come more and just to make you have more pimples. So if you're normal to combination skin, you might be able to get away from that. But if you're oily, do not do that to your skin. Stay away from that, okay? Leave that to the that have never had a pimple in their life, okay? Okay, so the next tip is really just by kind of breaking down and explaining what double cleansing is. I kind of should have followed this tip up right after I got done talking about double cleansing. But anyway, so basically when you double cleanse, you always want to use a oil-based cleanser, then follow it up with a gel-based cleanser, okay? I would never not use a gel-based cleanser after I just got done oiling using an oil-based cleanser. And the reason why you should use an oil-based cleanser first is because your makeup and SPF and lotions and things of that nature breaks down the oils that are in those products. So first you wanna break down the oil that is in the products that you use using your face. Then you wanna go behind it and use a gel-based cleanser. Basically anything that is gel or like foamy-like to really make sure you get all of the oil off your face, okay? So like I said, I would never use an oil-based cleanser and not follow behind it with a gel or like a foamy cleanser because if you use anything that is not a gel or a foam based cleanser after you didn't oil your skin first it's not going to take all the oil off okay you're still going to have oil on your face so to really get that clean face and make sure that you get all the product off your skin you want to follow it up with a gel or a foam face cleanser Okay, so next tip, I would never use a dry or alcohol-based toner. Stay away from those kind of toners, okay? Those toners need to be locked up and be in prison because they're really drying out your skin. Let me tell you something. If you are an oily person and you believe that you're not supposed to put like moisturizer or use anything that's hydrating, girl, you're wrong, okay? You need to be locked up right with them alcohol-based toners, okay? You still need to hydrate your skin even if you're oily. I don't care what combination skin or skin type you have, you always need to hydrate, but try to stay away from products that are drying. And toners are a great product to use after you get done cleaning your face, but dry and alcohol-based toners are going to dry out your skin. You always wanna use a hydrating toner, okay? I don't care what kind of toner it is. If it's an acne clearing toner or just a regular toner, make sure it has some type of hydrating, active ingredients in it which is like hyaluronic acid niacinamide make sure it has hydrating in the title okay that's all you need to look for okay i i'm not an ingredients uh expert okay all i know is if they say hydrating on the title use it <laughs> yep but yes, make sure you stay away from those drying alcohol-based toners because they're really gonna dry out your skin. You need to always make sure your skin is hydrated. 
And this next tip also piggybacks on what I just said about staying away from alcohol-based toners. Also stay away from drying and alcohol-based cleansers as well. Make sure your cleanser is always hydrating. I would never put a dry cleanser on my face as well. And this is how you know if a cleanser is not for you. Because I know you're thinking like, what the fuck is a dry cleanser? They're out there, okay? So if you cleanse your face and after you get done cleansing your face, you feel like your skin is dry or tight, that's a drying cleanser, okay? Stay away from her, all right? You always want to stay away from cleansers that you feel like your skin is stripped. You never want to use a cleanser that is going to completely strip the oils from your skin. You always want to use a cleanser that is hydrating. You can tell a cleanser is hydrating from how your skin feels after you get done washing your face. So when you use your cleanser, always make sure you feel on your face and be like, wow, my skin doesn't feel dry. It feels really smooth, hydrated, and bouncy. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how you know a cleanser is doing a great job. Stay away from the dry cleansers and toners. Stay away. All right, they need to be locked up. And the person that made it needs to be locked up, okay? Okay, the next tip should be common sense, but I still have to say it because there's some girls out here that do not do it. And you are crazy if you don't do this, okay? Stop walking out the house and not using SPF. What are you doing with your life? Like SPF has so many other benefits than just protecting your skin from the sun, all right? Using SPF every day has really, really helped out with my hyperpigmentation just from acne scars. Like it really does. Like if you have a really big issue with just like dark circles or dark marks from acne or just dark marks in general, just from, I don't know, put some SPF on, okay? I'm telling you, it's going to help. That that SPF is so good for your skin and you should be wearing it every single day. I don't care if it's snowing outside, okay? The sun still comes outside and says hi. As long as the sun is out, and you're out, you need to have on SPF. They say you need to apply it like two or three times a day. I don't do it two or three times a day, but that is the recommendation from like licensed estheticians and dermatologists that you should be reapplying it throughout the day. But I just make sure I put on a heavy coat and leave out the door and my SPF is always a higher than 30%, you know, cause that's, that's that's the best protection. But yes, wear SPF. Like I said, I should not have to say this, but I do. Because some people out here still be just going outside naked. Literally, with nothing on their face. What are you doing? All right, what are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, get it together. And for the last and final tip that I have of stuff I would never do to my skin is not go see a licensed esthetician. Did I say F petition? Esthetician, oh my gosh. Um, Yes, go see a licensed esthetician. Like, look, okay. I have a business degree. I do not have a cosmetology degree, okay? So please, all the advice I give you, even though I fact check my advice, and my advice is always things that has happened to me from personal experience, but never just take somebody's word who is not licensed, okay? Like I said, I have a business degree, not a cosmetology or esthetician degree. So go see somebody that is professional in skincare and professional in knowing about skin to really, really help you get to your Pacific skin goals okay because ever since i have you know been making a little bit more money i have been going to like med spas and dermatologists and estheticians so they can really tell me like what my skin really needs and it has really helped me like narrow down my skincare and helping me be a little bit more professional and knowing what skincare and what active ingredients work for me because of my estheticians have helped me out so i highly highly recommend you to go see a licensed esthetician or go to a dermatologist if you're really struggling with your skin or you just don't know anything what you should be doing when it comes to your skin and also watch my videos <laughs> because I know what I'm talking about definitely leave me some comments down below of some more things that you think people should never do to their skin or some things that you would never do to your skin like I said all of the 13 tips that I just gave you guys are examples of personal experience that I have been through that I would never do to my skin again and ever since I've stopped doing these 13 tips my skin has changed so much like I'm not you see this ponytail this ponytail would not lie to you okay this is a ponytail of somebody that tells the truth <laughs> So yes, definitely leave some comments down below of some more tips and tricks that you have that you would never do to your skin. Let me know in the comments as well if you guys want to see my actual skincare routine because it has changed so much. I was thinking about doing that video as well. I was thinking about either doing that video to this video, but I was like, no, I should probably do like things that I won't do to my skin before I do my skincare routine. I don't know. But let me know in the comments if you guys want me to do a actual skincare routine video of my night and morning skincare routine. And I love you guys so much. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you guys next video. Bye.